Dr. Cousins, everywhere I've heard in the whole food plant-based community, the thought is eat a whole food plant-based diet and get your cholesterol lower. In rural China, they had really low cholesterol levels. It seems that for the last 20 years, everything I've heard is low cholesterol below 150 makes you heart attack proof. And then you said during your lecture that actually 159 is safer and lower cholesterol is connected to depression and other issues. I'm wondering the discrepancy because, again, it seems like they're saying in all these rural China areas, they, in the China study, that they were saying that people had naturally levels below 100 of cholesterol. So um, if we're eating a plant-based diet and our natural cholesterol is 120, 115, 110, what point are you making about cholesterol being well, optimal? Well, it's an interesting thing. Mostly, we make 80% of our cholesterol at least in our liver, our cells. So I never think about a low cholesterol or high cholesterol diet. And I'm also looking at data not in China, because it's a different culture and a different genetics. I'm personally talking about what we're talking about in the United States, where we've seen, but it includes studies around the world, that uh, a cholesterol between 160 to 260 is, is actually safe. But the dangerous is the lower cholesterol, and the data is there. Uh, I even learned it in medical school, very indirectly, but people with low cholesterol are much more likely to be depressed because you need cholesterol as a receptor site for serotonin, which has an antidepressant effect. So I kind of knew about it in a whole different way back in the 60s. So what we're looking at is you have six times more suicide with lower cholesterol. That's just a, a fact. And if you're in the upper lower 25 percent, you're talking double the rate of suicide because low, you need cholesterol for proper brain function. So it's more like that kind of understanding is that when we examine lower, uh, we do have some problems. You're going to have more stroke with lower cholesterol. You're going to have more cognitive de decline. I'm not going to cite all the studies, but it's pretty clear People with lower cholesterol have greater cognitive decline than people with a higher cholesterol. So basically, these are studies are, are looking at. So I try to look at it holistically and say, OK, we can worry about cholesterol, but maybe we shouldn't, because if we go too low, we can create some problems for ourselves. Now, that's, the Ameri that's a kind of more Western European American culture where that data is from. So that's how I look at it, and it doesn't really include China, which is really a different, more of a different genotype. So it's a, it's a good question. Mostly I'm saying don't worry about cholesterol. It's the second biggest fear uh, is, you know, you have Alzheimer's and you have cholesterol. That's what people worry about. And actually low cholesterol contributes to cognitive de decline as well. I'll, I'll look through another window at this. Uh, as a, a vegan and always advocating, you know, cholesterol's bad, it can give you heart attacks, give you strokes, which is all true, and my colleagues, Dr. Esselstyn, will explain that to you, and Dean Ornish's work. That's the particular window they look through. Now, this is an evolving understanding. Science is not static. Science is not, this is science and we should institutionalize it. We learn as we go with this. And what we do know with centurions is they generally have higher cholesterol. And when they don't have dementia, they generally have higher cholesterol. So I'm ready to completely radically shift what I've said for 35 years, where always high cholesterol in every case is going to be a problem for you. I think the difference in my mind now, and it's evolving, is that after a certain age, high cholesterols aren't going to give you the potential for heart attacks and strokes like it would at 30 or 40 years old. What, what we seem to know is that if you want to live to 100 years old, your cholesterol better be on the high end. And I think the numbers you pointed out are absolutely correct. So I'm seeing this. Once these studies came out, I started to open my mind to a different thing. And I see the 80-year-olds sitting in front of me and the 90-year-olds. And guess what? They have 200, they have 250, et cetera. When I would have been yelling 20 years ago, oh, my God, you're going to have a heart attack. And they're just sitting there saying, yes, but your memory's going bad and mine's not. <laughs> so holistically is the key here. Heart attack is only one thing, and truly, if you're a vegan, you don't really have to worry about heart attacks. That's it's right. really not what's going on. 
and don't worry about your cholesterol either. We want to decrease the fear factor here. Uh, just, you know, there was a new um, President um, Council summary on cholesterol and heart disease and saturated fat and heart disease. It was looking at diet and heart disease in uh, probably just a couple of months ago. And there's definitely still concern about very high cholesterol levels and heart disease. But <laughs> I think people need to understand that high cholesterol levels alone are probably not going to do the trick. You need inflammation, oxidative stress, lipotoxicity, dysbiosis, all of these things that will come together to cause uh, cardiovascular disease. If it's just higher cholesterols alone and you're eating a wonderful vegan diet, uh, it, you're, you're probably on pretty safe, safe ground. Um, on the other hand, I know an awful lot of vegans, like myself, whose cholesterol sort of you know, around 130 or 140, uh, who, I mean, I've never been depressed a day in my life. Uh, and I, I feel like I'm very, very healthy and I don't want to necessarily do, some, you know, start eating uh, very differently. I already eat a lot of nuts and seeds and avocados and so forth. Uh, so I'm not really convinced that I need to make huge changes to try to increase my cholesterol either. Uh, there's still a lot of questions in this area. But she lives in a sunny place in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have, you could be a vigan in the dark, you'd be depressed. You know what, it's not true. We have a gray sky almost the whole winter. Do you really? Yeah, in that valley, that cloud, and I thought, boy, if I can stay happy through this, I'm doing okay. <laughs> you travel a lot. <laughs> you travel a lot. Yeah, well, so, so it is individu individual, and, and like Gabriel says, we, we have to make programs individual. And, um, you know, a lot of our guests comes in and they say, well, my whole family has high cholesterol, it's never going to move. And it moves. And they're shocked. It moves. All the time. All the time. So obviously, we get to where we should be. And so you might be in a certain number. I might be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. That's all individual. But you will actually get to where you should be. That's, that's the trick. <laughs> that's the good trick. Yeah, so what we found in our program is generally just doing the full 100% live food for most people, there's a 24% decrease in cholesterol. What we got to kind of look at is what, see, a lot of holistic physicians now are, are saying something different. The main cause of heart disease isn't cholesterol, it's inflammation. And it's inflammation of the cardiovascular system. That's the real issue, not cholesterol. So let's kind of get that clear. It's very important to get clear on that. Cholesterol comes later. But actually, triglycerides are a bigger problem. And as I showed this morning, that on this diet with, with more fat, less carbohydrate, because carbohydrates raise triglycerides, that you really don't want to be above 100 at most. And on, on this diet, which is higher fat, 25 to 45% plant fat, we had the lowest triglycerides, 82, whereas the kind of low fat diets had much higher because they were doing a lot more carbohydrates. And it's the triglycerides that are actually a much more serious threat to your cardiovascular system, just to kind of put it in perspective. But inflammation is the big issue. Yeah, what helps triglycerides and what helps fat and what helps diabetes and what helps everything we're talking about is good fats, which is sort of scary to if you're not a nutritional guy. You know, good fats prevent diabetes. Good fats prevent heart attacks. Good fats prevent mental right. illness. And another point on the uh, triglycerides is that there's a huge difference if you're eating a fairly high carbohydrate diet if the carbohydrates are refined versus unrefined. So with Dean Ornish, when he first started doing his program, uh, there, there were quite a number of refined carbohydrates. Uh, they, they used flour products a lot. Uh, now, the, the program that I'm doing in the Marshall Islands, we don't. Uh, we have a whole grain hierarchy. We draw the line at intact whole grains. We don't use flours. And so we actually had a 44-point drop in triglycerides on our program, even though it was relatively high in carbohydrates. The carbohydrates came from whole plant foods, not refined foods. And there's a very significant difference. In what's that. interesting, the same grain. You take the same grain, 
You could take it from the same plant, and if you refine one, it's a problem, and the other one is not. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Just shows you how delicate nature is. Thank you.